get out of my head. Holding her is dangerous. Yeah, you, it's all been said. I have you now. Cause it's a thing, it's a thing now. She'll die before she'll tell you anything. Listen up, it's all been said. The approach will not be easy. You're required to maneuver straight down this trench and skim the surface to this point. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of the Cantina Club Trench Run, our rapid fire segment where we go through a particular topic uh, in Star Wars lore. Uh, we have exactly 10 minutes to get uh, to get said what we want to say, uh, otherwise we get shot down by Vader. So, Stop uh, me destroy uh, you. We're, we're going to start it's impossible, with, even for a computer. Uh, uh, with an unboxing. Uh, Gundark, I believe you have something this week? Yeah, I got a t-shirt of uh, the week, um, a present from my husband for Christmas for the solo movie. Um, you can see what? it here. What? It oh, says, no. what, what in tarnation? <laughs> what in tarnation? I love it. What in tarnation? Mm. Appropriate with the um, <laughs> the western <laughs> motif of the solo movie. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So that's our T-shirt for the day. Perfect. All right. So this week. Our topic is going to be, or this episode, I should say, our topic is going to be Star Wars vehicles. And it can be favorites, Ooh. it can be uh, ep um, moments uh, about the vehicles, types of vehicles, whatever. And we're just going to hit it and go. Who's going to actually start this time before I start the clock? I will start. You will start. Gundar Death Star is going, going to... down this time. Vader will not win. <laughs> yeah, we are taking out the Death Star this time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And we are ready and go. Okay. Luke's land speeder. One of my favorite all-time vehicles, partly because of the toy that we had when we were kids, and we had a decapitated Luke Skywalker action figure that <laughs> was housed in that vehicle. And we lost his head, never could find it, but he still had his James meter. Dean. <laughs> and I, I, the whole thing about when we were kids, I didn't understand how that special effect was made of the hover craft um, what is it? and finally seeing it whenever you saw documentaries about the use of mirrors when it's flying across the landscape and then when it's on that big crane that tours around when it comes into park in front of uh, Luke's farm um, right. those reveals of how it actually functioned were really cool and then I found out that Luke's land speeder is now available uh, as a kid's uh, actual toy car oh <laughs> yeah yeah I saw that that's so great <laughs> damn bucks five hundred damn bucks and I'm no longer five years old so I can't fit into to it anymore i would have one but yeah if you got a kid go you would that. you would fit it you would fit in it it's actually big <laughs> you probably still like fit you. in it that's the thing uh, uh, and i hate to tell you but when toys r us went bankrupt you could have got it for like 100 bucks or 50 bucks or something <laughs> <laughs> tell her that <laughs> i turned it over to greedo on that note <laughs> greedo all right that's rolls attack in attack run. position i'm going to go with uh the imperial shuttle the imperial shuttle Okay, any particular reason? Um, I just I just really like the Imperial Shuttle. I, I think it's cool. It's an elegant design. That, um, I love the way the wings fold up. And um, I like the the moments in the movies where they use it. You know, it's so cool with Vader and the Emperor and stuff, transporting them around. And then Inform the commander that Lord Vader's shuttle has arrived. <laughs> and then when the rebels steal one um which is kind of used over and over again in the different cartoons and and shows and stuff um and also the the full scale toy of the imperial shuttle is really collectible and yeah. really really cool i have one in the other room actually <laughs> and uh and it's one of my favorite like ships because of that. So, so how do you um, how do you compare that one to the new version in the the sequel trilogy? That's awesome. With the abnormally long wings and the black. Um, Kylo Ren shuttle. I really like Kylo Ren shuttle, but I uh, do too. Uh, Ren and Kylo Ren in the it, it looks like an advancement on the design stuff. It looks a lot more lethal and everything, whereas it's awesome. Um, the Imperial shuttle just looks like it's more for transport. It's awesome. Uh, so yeah, but but the Imperial shuttle, I, like with me, original trilogy stuff will always it's awesome. rule until I see something that really blows my mind. It, uh, so yeah, it, it yeah. looks like a big vulture or something. It goes with his 
persona. Ran into Kylo okay. Ren in the bathroom. All right, well, I'm going to start my attack right now, and uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to go with the greatest ship in all of Star Warsdom. It is the twin ion engine fighter. The TIE <laughs> fighters are the greatest things in the history of Star Wars. To me. Yes, and that one, too, the original. And I do mean the original. The greatest, um, the original. I love some of the other ones, which we may get to, but the original is just so unique. Impressive. Um, just the, 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 the shape of it, the style of it, the way it would operate, the sound it made is just so unique to this day. Nothing in Star Wars has ever sounded as unique as that. You hear that, you know what it is. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to have to go with the original TIE Fighter uh, as one of my all-time all favorite, most amazing ships in the history of Star Wars. Yeah, and they're always flying at a weird angle, too, like, like that. <laughs> and I like how you can depict the, they're depicted at different speeds too you know you see you pretty much you see an X-Wing it's just always going full speed you know you see a TIE fighter they're, they've got like cruising speed they've got their attack speed it's I don't know I just thought it's a, a really amazing amazing original ship and there's nothing uh, like yeah. sitting, sitting in a theater with the old Dolby sound and hearing TIE fighters come from the back of the theater yes. over your head yeah <laughs> like flying right over your head exactly okay Gundark okay I'm making my attack run and I'm doing it aboard the Tanta V4. The Tanta V4, an underrated ship of Star Wars Mythos. The first ship to the appear. The Corvette. Yeah, the first ship to appear on right in the Star Wars film. Yeah. It goes first, first across yep. the screen before the Star Destroyer comes first. after it. And um, it had the guts to stand up to the Star Destroyer or try to escape from it. Come on, and the then I also the got to think about the guys aboard um, who who tried to help the Tanta V4 get away in Rogue One. And those dudes who stood up to Darth Vader in the corridor yeah. to protect the entrance. Should we put finger quotes around that? Oh, stood up yeah, to Darth Vader. Yeah, well, the one, the one dude who ran toward him. You're going to regret one this. Dude who recognized he was dying and he ran toward him because he had to protect the ten of you four and Princess Leia and let them get yep. away. Um, that dude awesome. That dude. Or maybe he was confused. <laughs> he took a blow to the head. He's just running the wrong direction. He's the hero. He's the hero. Of the Tanabee 4. And you should point out, it. too, Tanabee 4 was um, the captain, was the Captain Antilles, right? Correct. Uh, wasn't he related to Wedge Antilles? You're reaching now. No, he's not. Yeah, yeah, he was. Your captain computer's Antilles. off. What's wrong? No, no, no. <laughs> captain Antilles. <laughs> abort, abort this attack, <laughs> run. You've lost your droid. <laughs> you've lost okay. your droid, Gundark. <laughs> Greedo, you've got to finish this run. Okay, awesome ship. Awesome ship. Right, I I agreed, again. agreed. <laughs> you lost your starboard engine now. Alright, I'm gathering my uh, my crew for the attack run, and, and we're going to come in in snow speeders. That's right, the snow oh, speeder from Hoth. Uh, this, um, I always loved this ship ever since obviously saw it in the movie, and it always it grew on me, even though it's kind of a dumb ship, because it has a grappling hook on the back for some reason. <laughs> a harpoon. Like, what are they going to do? Go chasing whales in the ocean? <laughs> no, they're going to trip walkers. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna, they somehow know they're here to trip walkers. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> even though you could have, like, dug pits in the snow that the walkers could have fallen into, or Correct. something much more effective than a grappling hook on the back. It's awesome. But anyway, we're not going to question the Rebels wisdom. <laughs> uh, I love the scene in Empire, where you're seeing through the cockpit of the snow Peter and it and the landscapes moving up and down and on the big screen you like I remember getting a little bit of almost motion sickness from that I'm when sorry. they're looking for Han and Luke in the uh, on Hoth. Oh, right. And yeah. Ever since that scene with the, with the snow speeders, I loved them. And uh, when you look at the original, um, what do you call it? Uh, the the pre production drawings, the storyboards and stuff. Uh, like Joe Johnson's storyboards and, and uh, those guys who created the snow speeders, I think it's one of the coolest looking designs in storyboards, along with the walkers and stuff like that. So, yeah, I love snow speeders, the always liked the, the toys, always liked them in the movies, even though they're only in one. And, uh, Going with that for that Hello. for that toy. All right. Well, my turn. Uh, I'm going with Darth Vader's Star Destroyer, the Executor. Good uh, Star, Star Destroyers Good are, are already completely badass as they are, but then you <laughs> right. multiply, basically put it on steroids and multiply it by like 20 <laughs> <laughs> and, or, or more, and you've got the Executor. That just looks like to me. I love the shots in Empire, um, especially from behind when you can see the engines, uh, the glowing red uh, of the fuel, and just 
the overall sheer power that is uh, is put come, comes off of the screen to me when I watch that. Uh, so that, that ship has always been a favorite of mine. I, I think, think the it's TIE Fighters. TIE Fighters got the greatest sound, and I think the Executor is the greatest model they ever built. That is mm-hmm. correct. Yeah, possibly. I could agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Concentrate all fire on that superstar destroyer. I have a bad feeling about this. Intensify forward fire power! You have failed me for the last time. All right. Gundark. Gundark. Okay. Gotta hurry. Vader's closing I'm, uh, in. <laughs> I'm, going with, I'm going with another Hammerhead Corvette. Um, what? Uh, yeah. No, 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 it's the no, same no. ship. No, no. It's got, it's a, not the Tana before, the one from oh, Rogue okay. One that accomplished the smashing of the Star Destroyers. Since you're mentioning oh, the Star okay. Destroyers, that ha- when, yep. uh, who's the guy who's the, the uh, Mon Calamari, who's leader of the... the Admiral uh, Yeah, he uh, calls, yep. uh, bring the Hammerhead Corvette. <laughs> and I was like, okay, now right. I know why that's called what it is. I mean, look at that little ship that pushed one star to star into another and accomplished one of the most beautiful special effects in all of Star Wars films. When Absolutely. those starter stores crash, you got to give it to that that little ship and the, oh, the memory of the people that went down aboard it. Yeah, right. yeah. The memory. last time you see them, they're still stuck to that star destroyer, and they're going down into yeah, a place yeah. of glory. <laughs> yeah, you know right. they didn't make it out alive. <laughs> All right, get out of there, Gundark. You can't do any more good back here. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> She's hit. She can't stay with us. Uh, I'm turning off my targeting computer. I'm using the force. What are and you the doing? Force... <laughs> I'm all right. It's all good. <laughs> the force is telling me what is inevitable, what is true, what I know from my feelings, what I know from facts. Yes. Uh, what? The Star Destroyer is the greatest single Star Wars ship that has ever existed, that ever will exist. The classic Star Destroyer, not the wimpy First Order crap that they tried to come with in the sequel trilogies. Those suck. Correct. The Star Destroyer is classic. It's badass. It is the ultimate ship. Sure, they collide. They collide constantly. What I mean, now? but they're a big triangle floating in space. I mean, <laughs> Correct. They, of course, they're going to collide with each other constantly. In space. They, yeah, Correct. The, the, the officers. Yeah, and the officers are all in competition with each other. They don't work together, so of course they're going to ram each other constantly. Like and trying to get a little. You now. Trying to get a little. Fr- I have you now. Oh. I have you now. Where did this get down? Could you make sympathy for the rebellion? Oh, what you think, what you think, old man? Yeah, you don't need to know her. Hold your fire. There's no life for down. Do we start over? Good work. Stay on target. 